let's move on, man. Um, we talk about unknown. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about somebody that I don't think you and I really talked about too much. We brought his name up every once in a while. I've met him a couple times myself via you. Um, talk to me about Arabian Prince and how you guys met and any stories you may have and his importance to hip hop. You know, Arabian Prince is my boy. I talk to him today, man. We talk almost every day. And uh, Arabian Prince, like like most West Coast promoters, was a independent dance promoter. He started doing dances at this little spot over in a city called Lenox, California, not far mm-hmm. from uh, Inglewood. The airport. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right by the airport. And um, he was he was uh, he was deep into Prince. I mean, he was he his Prince uh, knockoff make Yella look like Jimmy Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had the curly hair. He had the he had the silver collar, and you know, yeah. you know, he got naturally curly hair, so his hair's all in his face. And uh, but he's always been uh, a cool nerd, and that's probably how the best way to describe the Arabian Prince. He's probably a, he's a real cool nerd. Okay, drives a cold ass, thick BMW, gold wings and shit. Uh, Sports car from James Bond looking shit, but he's a he's a video game dude. He plays video game most of the time. He's into okay. he's into coding. He's into um, tech. Period. When I have a tech problem, I call Un- I mean, I call Arabian Prince. Now him and Unknown both are very they very tech tech minded dudes. <sighs> and when it, when it comes to um, a, a serious problem, past uploading a uh, loading something on the computer, they are. They go into the computer and start going to places I would dare not go. And that the music thing also makes them, you know, gave them another uh, avenue to uh, exercise some of their, some of their creativity. And Arabian Prince, that's just he's one of them dudes. I mean, he's always been a, uh, he's always been a, uh, a, a, a musical, a musically, a musically minded cat from Compton. Uh, he and I, we, we, we connected. We both went to the same elementary school. We both Catholic school kids. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, most people don't know this. Dad used to own uh, Players Magazine. Uh-huh. The Players Magazine. I was too young, but I know about it. Tell us about that. Players Magazine was the... Uh, like a black penthouse kind of, right? For, um, for the hood. Yeah. That was the hood magazine, Okay. Uh, the girl, they didn't, they didn't airbrush in players, okay? <laughs> if you had stretch marks, you got stretch marks. You got bullet yeah. wounds, you got bullet wounds. You got stab wounds, you got stab wounds. If you're having a bad hair day, okay, oh well, click, click, baby, <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it wasn't like Hustler, and um, it wasn't like none of the other white magazines, but I guess if you were a brother that, that liked natural women, it was a great magazine for you. Mm-hmm. And you saw a lot of girls, that you knew from the hood, <laughs> okay? You saw a lot of women that you knew from the hood in, in, in Players Magazine. His dad was the editor-in-chief of Players Magazine, so he's always had somewhat of a um, foot oh. in the entertainment business. And that's just my dude, man. Like I said, we are uh, we on the verge right now dealing with some stuff. We just did an interview, that, uh, documentary. They did a documentary on Snoop Dogg out of Germany. Oh, nice. They just interviewed us for the documentary. We both we was gonna ride together, but we both had scheduled things scheduled after the show I and mean, after the interviews. So we just decided to roll together, we to roll, roll separately. So, you know, he's an avid golfer, and this dude played golf every almost every day. You know, we were laughing this morning about how um, everybody is uh, uh, senior citizens. You know, technically. But mm. we don't feel like it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, we don't feel like it. You know? Arabi is like 56 years old. And, you know, he played golf every day, played basketball. I mean, you know, the, the car that he drives, the life that he, lifestyle that he lives, is, he ain't living in no senior citizen, no assisted living home, okay? Mm-hmm. And we was laughing about, this, about the same thing this morning, how, um, you know, I think, I think it may be, may be our hip-hop lifestyle, man. You know, we, we you know we, we push buttons, we party for a living. Our, our, we got different energy levels, man. You know, mm-hmm. and we've been doing this shit all our lives. So, you know, thank God for hip hop. 
Yeah, I was going to ask you because I want to feel like you when I'm 65. I see some 65-year-olds, and they look like they need to be in a home or something, like you said. And whatever you're doing, dog, teach me the secret because I want to be like you when I'm 65 because sometimes you got more energy than I got. I'm 43 years old. I'm over here tired of shit. And you're like, let's go, baby. I'm like, that's, but you bring out that energy, man. So, yeah, keep, keep, keep young, man, because you, you, you're going to live to be 100 doing that shit. I'm 54. Don't give me the most. Don't give me that. Oh, know. my bad. I keep saying that. I'm sorry, man. Four, man. My man. bad. Don't give me no. <laughs> I <ain't> got, okay? <laughs> but you know what, dude? I, I wear it proudly, man, because, you know, when I when I look back and I see the newspaper every day, that it, some a feed on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, 21, 19, gone, 35, gone. And, dude, man, come on, man. Come mm -hmm. on. That's heart attacks at 30 because they're doing too many drugs. You're like, you're having a heart attack at 30? But on the other hand, and I say this all the time, on the other hand, when I look at, like today, the dude that made a, I think it was a weapon, 91. Mm -hmm. 91. Hey. Okay? 91. <laughs> I mean, when, 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 when actors of another race, when they check out, you know, hip-hop is the only one to eat their young, kill their young, Okay? Mm -hmm. You know, and make some of these Instagram situations or these uh, overzealous uh, wannabe um, YouTube um, uh, creators. But mm -hmm. for the most part, man, it's just amazing that the, we've accepted shooting and killing and death as being a part of a culture. That ain't our culture, man. That ain't, that's not a culture, dude. Mm. And that's something that we brought into the game, or that, that brought into the game by us, not us. Uh, as us, but we brought this into the game, and we, we they, somehow or another, we convinced ourselves it's okay. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, it, it's okay. Man, but when the cops kill us, it's all hell breaks loose. Do you realize that T-shirts and uh, now masks have become a, 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 a for memorial mask and memorial T-shirts is a cottage industry in the hood? It's a cottage industry, man. I mean, people do this. That's part of one they hustle. All they do is do memorial T-shirts. They not make a quick hundred, quick two hundred. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. They don't sell them. They, my, my, my son in law makes memorial masks with <laughs> matching T-shirts. Okay. Golly. Memorial mask and matching T-shirts. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Man. Just like you said, there's more. There's so much money in, in black on black, Latino on black, Latino on Latino crime. They're making shirts now. Not only are lawyers getting paid and judges and people buying prisons and things like that, it goes all the way down to the dude selling shirts on the corner. You know, if you really understand, and this, is, this is why I think it's important that they teach civics in school, although they don't. Civics mm -hmm. does not allow people to really understand how government works, how the system works. That was one of the class, uh, class that I had in Vanguard or even a uh, centennial, and once you understand how things around you work, you 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 have a different perspective on what you you know what's important. Okay, you have much you have much more you have much different much different perspective on what's really important. And I think that's where people make the mistake at. Well, that's where they uh, that's where that's where they don't want you to know certain things. That's where this critical this critical race theory thing coming in that. Now y'all, y'all might not hear. You won't hear about this on Power One Hundred Six. You won't hear. It's critical race theory. What they, what they trying to put a, what they call a, um, a non-disclosure agreement on history. Maybe that's what it comes down to. A non-disclosure agreement on history. So what, what they are saying is we did a lot of fun. Dan, dance dance around this really real quick, it. real quick, real quick. Dance around this topic a little bit. Um, Carefully, because unfortunately, I have heard that this is something that YouTube is, is striking people for, like coronavirus. It's critical okay. race theory is, is is a topic that. So yeah, but go ahead, keep keep going and talk, talk to me. But yeah, just dance it's, around a little bit. It's like it's like somebody the same problem I have with corporations that do things to people. You know, they they know they have a product that's uh, deadly. They know it's killing people or making people sick, but you can't tell nobody. Okay, we're gonna give you this check. Can't tell nobody we paid you. We, you can't tell nobody how you got money from us because they may come do the same thing. Okay. In this other situation, it's more like people feel that if we keep telling everybody how bad America did people, 
the people are going to get empathetic to the to the native to the uh, indigenous people, black people, mm. even in Mexicans. And as generations go along, they may feel they need to be more sympathetic and empathetic toward them. And that's not gonna, that's not going to serve our purpose. Mm. Yeah, I got to look more into that critical race there. I've been hearing a lot about it lately. Huh. Yeah, man. Well, shit. Um, before we even move on, just real quick back to um to Arabian Prince and how he used to dress and the Prince and all that. Real quick, I want to end it with with this. Um, you old school players, you can't talk about how these kids used how these kids are dressing nowadays because Grandmaster Flash and World Class Wrecking Crew, you guys were dressing on you guys were on some shit. It, I mean, but women liked it, right? Like women, you walked into a party and women were on it. Hey, I always rub it on my suit. Man, I got my suit right here, too. No, my suit. Damn. Right they rub it on this suit. Oh, they, yeah. Oh, my God. It's so nice. Okay? Wow. You, could, you couldn't, you uh, couldn't, dude, not one member of the record crew kept their jacket any length of time, so they all got stolen. Hmm. Oh, you, you do not put your jacket down. They would get stolen. Hmm. Now, understand this. The purple jackets were the first ones we had. We had three different sets of jackets, though, and nobody has any of them. Mm. We had three different sets of jackets. Okay. We had the purple ones, that was first. Then we had uh, some blue ones made, some black and blue ones made. Then we had burgundy and silver ones made. And the burgundy and silver ones, the burgundy and silver ones were reversible because we got we kept getting sweated by other promoters. We walk into their sets, we just... We just we just sheen on it. We just coming in this, and, you know. We twenty deep. And all jacket is down. <laughs> Made people Ooh. feel bad. Okay. This man. I mean, I appreciate if y'all thought wearing your jacket in the set. Okay, cool. No problem. Yeah. We got we got we got him on the uh, on the reversible side and get in the set. And turn him around. Oh, it's like it's like going to a motorcycle club with your colors on. Dang. Did did someone specific make your wardrobe? Huh. Did someone specific make your wardrobes? No, we, it was a lady, the company who made our, our jackets, she was in the Valley and she made, she had an exclusive contract with all the record companies and you could not buy their jacket. That's what made me do, do it the way they did because you couldn't buy a record company jacket. If you didn't work for Warner Brothers or Motown or Arista or RCA or whoever, you could not own a jacket. And when you went to the conventions, like Jack the Rapper or um, the BRE convention, back then, the dopest thing you can see is all these jackets. You got these, see, y'all don't understand that. Because y'all, you know, y'all don't understand. They, everybody wear t-shirts. But when you go into a room and you see pockets of satin jackets, it made you want to have one. And that's what I did. I, I want, oh, not, I, need, I need some of this for me, okay? Yeah, I got, a, I got, a, I got a company. And I want all my own goddamn jackets, and we're the only ones that ever did that. Mm. Record crew was the only one that ever did that. Cause yeah. I'm a record dude first and foremost. I wasn't just a hip hop dude. I was into the record mm -hmm. industry. I was, in, I, I hung out with record guys, so I understood how they thought, what they did, and how they did, how they, how they did certain things. They were my friends. I still mm -hmm. go to, I still go to the record pick, record picnics every year. Everybody at the picnic, I'm probably the youngest cat in the picnic. Damn. Okay. <laughs> but they, you know, the record industry dudes, man, you know, record and radio, they just evolve. They don't stop doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. they just, you know, the connections are still there for the most part. Mm -hmm. We ain't got to lift a lot of heavy lifting with 12 inches in the albums no more. But you, the, the connections are still there. A lot of these guys are podcasters. Or they're working with on, on the, um, either Sirius or uh, one of the streaming services. So a lot of guys are still in a position to do things. 